Hi, this is Laura Siri with Red Carpet Report. We're here at a special screening of Showtime's limited series, Gorilla. Oh, sorry. Good, how are you? I'm looking off into the distance. Oh no, you got flashes all over you, so I totally Absolutely. understand. How so, are you? Good, good. I want to know, what drew you to this role? What drew me to it? Um, John Ridley. No, I'm kidding. Um, I, uh, I think he goes through a very interesting journey, Marcus. Um, I sort of felt like he's going on this journey and he's transforming as a person. Actually, John put it really well when we talked about that. He said, actually, he becomes himself. And, you know, as a man, as I grow older as well, I feel like I'm letting go of some of the old ideas I have about who I am. And, you know, here's the case in point. We're standing here talking, there's a camera pointing at me, and yet I feel I can just say what I want to say. Um, cut back 10 years, I probably wouldn't feel like I should do that. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, not everybody goes through that, but something in Marcus and his slow, steady realization of who he is, just when I saw the character on the page and over the six apps, I really was just like... It's incredible. Yeah. Well, this, with the troubling times what's going on with mm. Brexit, especially in the UK with Brexit and, and, and racism, xenophobia, how do you feel like this series will uh, reflect that, reflects the times currently? It does. It sort of, you know, I, I would love to say that, you know, John sort of was prophetic and came up with the timing excellently, but to be honest with you, He's been developing this for a really long time, and uh, he, you know, he rightly says that it's, you know, it's timeless. It's not so much that it's timely. We just happen to have another wave of that happening right now. But where does the wave come from? There has to be a deep ocean under it. And frankly speaking, the underlying issues haven't changed. They're still there. Um, interestingly, it's made me look at where I come from. You know, back in Gambia and um, you know the whole of West Africa and all of the little divisions we find amongst ourselves there you know and the divisions in England even within a certain community of everybody looking exactly the same we can find we can always find something to create this us and them mentality which um, if we let it spiral like it is right now or we legislate for it it gets even more dangerous it gives people the right to step up and go hey you you know and if somebody does that to you you want to go hey you back and We'll see. We'll see where we get with it. I hope people watch the show and see consequence from it. Yeah. yeah. Well, with this series being about uh, black rights and the black movement in the UK, do you feel like anything has changed in the UK, like from then to now? Sorry, I'm listening. I saw John got caught me. Say it again. My apologies. Well, do you? How do you feel like with the with this series? It's about black rights movement, the movement going on, and racism. Um, do you feel like times has anything changed? Um. A lot has changed, and nothing has changed. A lot has changed in the sense that I feel that quite a number, quite a bit of the work that was done. So, for instance, in the UK, there were certain players in that movement. The work that they did to change legislation, to have an impact on the way things are done. You know, it's been sorry. There's a thing flying in your face. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the things that they've done, we can't negate that and turn around and say nothing has changed because they did have an impact. They have put in, you know, um, there's more equal opportunity. I'm not saying it's there yet, you know. Um, there's more, um, we're closer to equal representation. I'm the lead of a TV show on Showtime and Sky Atlantic. Good. <laughs> well, God bless, thank you. But maybe once upon a time it wouldn't have mattered. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I feel like we are moving yeah. and I don't want it to be just a few of us. I want us all to move forward together, you know, regardless of what your denomination is, whatever that means, you know. So, but yeah, I feel like there is still a huge amount of work to do. I feel some work has been done. Well, know. because this is a serious drama and also a love story, how much of yourself did you put into this role? It's kind of inevitable. You, you end up um, caring about some moments more than others, especially when it becomes extremely relatable. There were moments where, in spite of myself, I found myself really moved in the scene where you can't quite separate yourself from this supposed character you're playing and you know after 14 weeks of filming you're you're in there um, so yeah I did use as much of myself as I could especially this role you know it wasn't necessarily a departure I, I tried to use as much of myself as I possibly could you know well because this is such a serious role as well what did you learn from this if you learned anything from this before you came in versus when you came out of it um, I guess before I came in I was really sort of seduced by the theatrics of it you know walking around with a gun and so on and so forth and 
growing a beard and having a, you know, um, to, to perform these actions against this oppressive state. And then um, we started to actually do it and now I'm watching it back and it screams one word to me in its consequence. You think, okay, that's all very well and good, but, um, you know, if you're killing people and if you're, even if you feel you're righteous, how do you sleep with that? How do you, what about those people, you know? It's, it's really, that's what is good. That's what that's what's affected me most. I'd say, yeah. What do you hope that people will get from this the series? How complex it is. I was asked earlier who my favorite character was, and um, it's a tricky one because so many of them are blowing my mind. In every app, someone sort of comes forward more. But Cullen, who is an Irish uh, police officer, son of Irish immigrants, who's a police officer, and he's chasing black radicals, so he is against us. But in the police, he is that guy who's slightly outside and under and watching what it does to him as a human being. Um, I think there's a warning there to be careful about your sense of self, you know. Um, I hope the audience watch it and it blurs the line so much that they don't just go, these are the good guys and these are the bad guys. <laughs> they go, wow. <laughs> Maybe there's no good or bad guys. We just all got to try and rub along. <laughs> yeah. Does the story give you any appreciation for what the, 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 the movement has gone through? In the past, yeah. very much so. And I got to meet some of the people from the movement, you know, and talk to them. Uh, people who were close to my character, Farouk Dondi, who's written this incredible book called London Company. And um, yeah, I just was so inspired by them because what they had was a, by the end, a plan of sorts. They had an idea about what they wanted to do, whereas now the anger feels like it's not channeled. So, you know, when we got Brexit in the UK, there wasn't really an, a solution to Brexit. What we had was, if we leave, we'll get this, this, this. If we stay, you know, things will stay the same. And you go, well, what about, what about you tell us what will happen if we stay in Europe? Sell it. Come up with something that it's useful for. And sometimes you felt like there just wasn't anything, you know. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more videos. Leave a comment of what's your favorite Showtime show.